Hello, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this wonderful tutorial, we're trying to see how to do a simple data analysis using Julia. So this time, you'll not be using pandas, rather we're using Julia from from instead of using Python pandas, right? So let's see what we're doing. So we're doing the busy stuff we have been doing from our data set. So let's see the packages we use. So these are the packages that we'll be using to help us with our tasks. We're using, we're using CSV to help us read our CSV files. We're using data frames. We're using plots and start plot package and then data structures as well as PyCall to help us with any external package that we may not have available in Julia. Okay, so let's see how to work with it. So this is going to be our URL. So this is from our official GitHub repository and we're fetching it directly from that place. So let's load this one. So it's going to load it. Now in Julia to install a package, just go to, there are several ways. So the first method of installing any of these packages here is just go with is installing packages in Julia is very simple so let's go to pkg just go to using as the first method pkg then pkg dot add then you supply the package so let's say data frames right that is how to install a package in Julia that is the first method the other method is just go to your Ju Julia terminal right and then you switch to this right you just go to this particular option here and then you just add a package so let's say add csv let's go to add a particular package to it that is how to install a package in julia very very simple and very easy now let's work on our tax so we're doing everything from scratch so it may take some time so let's start with it okay so let's start so this is our URL to be working on now we have seen how to install our package so let's see some stuff we'll be doing so first of all let's load our packages so to load our packages go with using let's call it as load load our packages so using first of all using csv right to help us with our stuff and then data frames the data frames package Perfect. So let's load that particular package. These are the two main packages to be loaded. Whilst it is loading, we will try and see some stuff we can do. We'll try and see how to load our data set. It is going to be loading our data set. So it's going to be since we are fetching it from a URL, there are several ways you can do that. But the simplest way is just go with this option. So let's go to our confirmed. Right. For our confirmed cases. So you can just call it as confirm data frame right then i'll just go with my csv dot read then i can read a particular file if it's a csv file i can just read it with this particular option but since it is a url from this particular url we just go with the download which is a inbuilt julia function then i supply the particular url which is our confirmed cases URL, right so that is how to download a particular package or to fetch data set from a url this option so csv.read then download then the particular url so that is going to be for our confirmed cases so let's try that one out for the rest right so i'll just make sure that you have internet connection do the same thing for the rest this may be slow a little because my system is slow apologies for that so this is going to be for our confirmed and then this is going to be recovered right so this coming from here then we do the other one for the deaths cases right perfect so let's load them out so just start it's going to fetch it from github then save it as see it as data frames inside this particular variables that you have created so whilst it's doing that, let's check for the various features of it, right? So we can just check with the columns. So in that case, it can be very simple. So, but let's preview the first rows. So first, let's say first 10 rows. So in Julia, to preview the first 10 rows, just go with my first. And then I'll supply the particular data frame. So let's say confirmed df, right? Then I'll supply the value 10. That is how to preview the first. 10 rows the previous one was going with head if you do head it's also going to work but this is deprecated right this is deprecated but it's still going to work but the 
the recommended way is to use first then supply the particular number of rows you want to get so you can see from here that that's finished right that's finished downloading and storing them perfectly for us so this is how it's going to be like very interesting but you have to reshape it in a very nice format okay so let's work on it so i can just preview the first 10 rows it's going to help us view the first 10 rows then case i also want to do for the last so I just that's showing us the first 10 rows right perfect if i want to want to view the last rows can also go with the last then i'll pass in my confirmed df then i supply the particular value so let's say 10 right so the last 10 rows is going to bring the last 10 rows for us yemen starting from alphabetical order very interesting that is how to work with julia so let's check for the names of our column so first of all we're working only only on the confirmed cases so the names or the column names so to check on the column name just going to be something very simple go with names then you supply the confirmed and df so i go with this going to give us all the names of the column that we have perfect so these are all the names and then they are a lot and then from this you can see that it is not the best format we have to convert this one into a format that we can read right if you look at this one here it is going like this which is not the best right it goes straight like this so let's make it better right so the symbol is how it is stored in so th these ones are our symbols anything that is having this one in front of them is symbols and if it's like a string you can just convert it to a symbol using this particular function so let's try and then reshape our data set right so i'll be trying to let's check for the size of this stuff first before we reshape it so if i check for the size the shape of it i can also do the same thing for the size of the confirmed of the recovered you can see that this is 264 but this is 250 that means that some of them are out so we, we cannot match them right away we have to do some cleaning so let's do the same thing for the debt df let's check so the date and then the conf confirmed are almost the same but the recovery is different so that is the shape of our data set now let's see how to res restructure our data set here so let's restructure our data set so there are several ways of doing that we can use the melt right we can also use the stack to help us with that so let's try that one out so in case you want to check for all the particular attribute inside a particular package right in python you may do something like this so dir apologies for the noise behind dir right for a python but in julia it is very simple just go with the names then you supply the particular package so let's go with data frames then just go with all is equal to true right if i go with all is equal to true it's going to list all the various stuff it's supposed to be small t i'm going to list Going to do the same function that this DRL does, right? And list all the various stuff there. So these are all the various attributes that we have: title keys, on compact unique, on stack update, all of these things, right? Very interesting. So in case I want to use check for melt, I can just go with say check for melt. In case you don't know, you want to check for it. Let's go with melt. Right, that is how to work with it. So melt. You can see that this, these are all symbols, right? These are all symbols. Anything with this is a symbol. So melt in my data frame. So I can just go with the same thing, like names, data frames, let's go to all true, right? So if it's going to tell us that it is true, right? Perfect. That means that you can use melt to help us restructure our data set. So it's going to be the same thing. So melt, and I'll pass in my confirmed data frame, then I'll do that stuff. So in that case, it's going to be this right so our data frame then you supply the columns that we want so i'm using a symbol then i supply the particular stuff because if you check for the column names of let's check for it here of our confirmed data set it's going to be like this so if i go with the names of confirmed df we're going to list them perfectly for us so we have this stuff and then this one so we want to keep these ones as constant right these these four as constant and then change these ones right move these ones or stack them so let's work on that so i'm going to do the same thing here so this is going to be province and state so i'll copy this one here paste it here right for province and state and do the same thing for the other one which is going to be let's say our country assemble right so it's going to be symbol 
and then I'll just go with country slash region right and then the next one is going to be for our lat and then our longitude right, just as we have here so we have our lat and our longitude so these are our symbols it is also a symbol so perfect so that is it it's going to convert everything into a nice format so let's run it out hopefully it doesn't give us any error so we made a mistake here right it's supposed to be a comma here right it's going to bring it perfectly wrong Going to take some time and analyze it and then make some changes to it perfect so that's finished right so this is said one emote this is how it's supposed to be so note then the id bar just like in pan python pandas right then the variable name then the symbols so that's exactly what we did but this has been duplicated so the best option is to use this particular option right so that's what we're trying to use so it melt will work but the recommended way is to use stack right that's the advantage of using julia data frames so let's try with stack so stack is going to be this stack just as we saw here we saw here that it was this option right so stack data frame and then a particular various value variables right that you don't want to store and then the rest so it's going to be this option stack then i'll supply my data frame to confirm df as data frame and the ones that i don't want to i can just supply it as this my the same thing i had here these ones here if i go with this particular option right it's going to keep these ones these two as variables which is not what i want right so, so this is going to give us something different from this one this is the best format right but i don't want this i don't want to use melt i want to use stack as it is being stated but if i go with this option it's not giving us the right format so this is not the best option so i'm going to use the not to help us with that so this ones these ones will keep it will keep these as variables right so we realize that this province and then country are kept as the variables which is not what i want i want to keep these values as the variables and then these ones as th these ones are static so in that case it's going to be this option so let me copy this one here and then do the same thing and use not for that it's going to be not put them inside the not function it's going to exclude these ones and keep the ones, these ones as constant right now if i run it it's going to perfectly work for us so then see that this is better right so this is how i want it, which is totally different from this one right totally different so this is the best method and this is what how we can use to do our analysis so our variables are these ones here and then these ones are constant so let's equate this inside another data frame so let's call it as confirmed df right or let's make it like this df confirm <laughs> and just changing it right so this is a clean one right so let's save this one here in julia in case you don't want to see these ones over and over again just bring the stuff there the semicolon there okay here so if i run it again in like this one it's not going to show it so it's not show it by bringing this semicolon there right that is how to hide it from showing perfect so we have named to structure our data frame so we can do the same thing for the rest so let's try the, the same thing for our for the confirmed and then the rest right for the dates and then for the recovered so let's go with recovered perfect and then this is going to be for the dates it's also going to work perfectly for us perfect now we have name to be structured and if i go with df confirmed then right if i preview it head i can use head but it's going to it's going to work but it's going to tell me that it is duplicated so the best option is not to use head but to use what first right so it's still working perfectly for us so if i go with first confirm df confirm let's say 10 going to work perfectly for us right very interesting so we can check check for the size so far
df confirmed wow that is good and let's check for that one for the debt and these are the the debt and then the confirmed I have almost the same thing it's recovered it is, it is more than that but the debt is almost the same as the confirmed so we can merge the debt and then the confirmed together so, so that's going to be an assignment right <laughs> okay so let's work on that one supposed to be debt perfect right almost the same right so let's see some other stuff we can also do so we have seen how to work on it structure them perfectly together we can also join them together in case you want to do right so let's try that one but before we join them we have to make sure that we rename these ones right because this is not the best option so let's see how to rename it so i'll go with rename let's go with first df confirmed first So these are the variables. We have to change this variable to confirmed, right? And then the value. So the value to confirmed and then the variable to the date. Because if you look at here, this is the variable is the date. The value is the confirmed value, right? So we have to rename it. So to rename it, let's go to this rename. It's going to be rename bank. Rename bank, right? Like that. Then I'll pass in my column that I want to name it because I'll pass in the data set it's going to be df confirmed then I'll supply a dictionary of what I want to change so I want to change my variable referring to this particular variable symbol here to dates right so let's use a date symbol that is going to be the first one then we try the same thing for the value so the value rename it to confirmed so let's call that one as confirmed perfect so that is how to rename a column right very interesting so if i run it i'm going to rename it the bank is going to rename it and then make it permanent right so perfect so it has been, it has done that one for us so we can do the same thing for the rest so let's copy this one here and then run it for the rest right so so this is going to be for the debt recover the first then this is going to be for the debt okay so this we'll change this one to recover it symbol and then this is going to be for debt And then as I said, let's make it debt. As I said, in case you don't want to show it, just bring the semicolon. So I made a mistake somewhere. Recovered. Mm -hmm. So let's run it again. Perfect. Right. So everything has been. Everything is well. Right. The debt recovered. Perfect. Now we can merge them. So let's merge the debt and the recovered. So let's call this joining or merging before we do any analysis so we are doing everything from scratch so we may fail so join so we join our df confirmed right with on site on a df dead right that is we are joining this one and this on a particular value columns right so i just join the first column so i'm joining the dates not, not the dates but the dates right the that's rule and then we will also join the countries also right so that's what we join upon so let's go with the symbol i'll just go with my country region country slash region Perfect, right? That's what we are joining on. So we are joining on the debts. We are joining the debts and then the symbol to our confirmed data frame. That is the first stuff we'll be doing. So let's bring it here. So this is supposed to be this option. Right. Perfect. 
so that's the first stuff you are doing right then after that we will join them on something so what are we joining them on we are joining them on a particular value so we join it on our country symbol symbol country slash region right the same thing here so that's what you are trying to join them on so that's the similar one perfect so hope everything is working well right so let's store inside it something called data frame right and let's it will take some time for you to run perfect so let's work on it we have let's save it and then we'll do another stuff with that my system is slow sorry for that <laughs> So now let's save it. So in case I want to save this particular data save. So let's save it. Save, right? So it can just be CSV dot right. And I'll pass in the name. So let's call it as let's say uh, COVID current cases, something like that. Data set dot CSV. Right, and I'll pass in the DF there. So that is how to save or write your file right, right. You see very interesting it's going to save it inside our current location now whilst it's saving it let's do some other stuff so this so the stuff you'll be doing here is going to be doing the normal basic analysis we're finding the number of cases per country number of cases per country right you'll be grouping them together then the same thing per day right and then also find the top countries affected as well as the number of countries affected these are the basic stuff you'll be doing okay from henceforth then later we'll do our plot just taking some time but apologies for that right so let's see if the number of countries affected so that is going to be the next question we're trying to answer so what are the number of countries affected that's already finished saving it so to find it just go with my df right so if i go with my first df 10 now we can see the first 10 rows so in case i want to find the number of countries affected i'll just have to find all the countries inside this particular column using unique right so it's going to be very simple. I'm just going to go with my DF then symbol country slash region. Right. That's going to be for all the countries and the regions. Perfect. Then I can just use unique right to help with us. So unique. Pass it a particular option there. So we're going to list all of them, the unique values there for us. So mostly the best way of doing this is just go with the bank, then supply this option, right? So that is the best way. So the bank is going to select that particular column and everything there. So that is the simplest option. So these are all the unique countries. So we have about 185 different countries. So to find the number of countries, these are all the countries affected. But to find the, the number of countries, it's going to be the length. And I'm passing this same thing here. So we're going to count it perfectly for us. So these are the number of countries affected which is a lot almost every country has been affected so far 185 countries is quite a lot wow that is the number of countries so we are done with the first the next question number of countries affected so in order to also find the number of cases per country you can also work on that using the group by so number of cases per country right so be using the group by so there are several ways you can work with it just go with the by supply the particular data frame then you supply the column that you want to group by so in this case you'll be grouping by the symbol column you'll be using a symbol but rather you use symbol to convert the country region which is a string so that's what you're picking right then you can actually use a counter or count to count 
this particular the cases there so let's count the confirmed cases if you check from here we have a confirmed column here right so we'll be counting all the confirmed cases for each and every of the countries so it's going to group the entire data set by the country then count the confirms then sum it up so you can just go with this confirmed then you will use an arrow and supply what you want to do so if i go with sum it's going to group them by country then check the confirmed column then sum it up for us so it takes some time for it to analyze it and give us the result perfect so these are all the countries right these are all the countries that regardless is having about well 69,000. more what that is too much <laughs> that is too much right about 699,000. so if you use the sum but the best option is you can use the max option right to help us with that so this is going to be for the sum let's try with max maximum so in that case it's going to be maximum which is different from the sum taking time to compute all of them it is a lot of rows it's going to give us the result The thing is very very slow because of my system. Apologies for that. So perfect. So it has finished perfectly for us. So maximum is the best way to find the number of cases per country, right? perfect so you can also actually in this same format you can also find the top largest country so let's try that one out so it's going to be like this so i can save this one inside the variable right so let's save this one inside the variable called let's say countries call those cases per countries right these are the best way of <laughs> writing a variable in julia but we can use this one like that perfect so let's try it out so these are new cases so we can just go with cases per country right if i go with the names now consider it is having these columns we have two columns we have our symbol and then our count so i can find the largest or can sort the largest right with that perfect so in case i want to get the top countries affected we have seen all the cases per countries is so i want to get the top countries affected so let's go to top countries affected you see top 10 countries affected I just go with sort then i'll pass in my cases per country Right now, I'll give it the column I want to sort on. So it's going to be my count column. Right, this count column. Pivot. Then I can just go to reverse, go to true. Then now this is going to sort it perfectly for us. So the top countries affected are US being the highest, Spain being the next, Italy, France, German, United Kingdom. Right. So these are the countries affected. Uh, but I can also be specific and make it like top countries by specifying let's say ten countries affected. So in that case, I'll just do the same thing, but put it as, let's say, 1, 2, let's say, 10, right? So now it's going to bring, oh, I made a mistake somewhere. So it's supposed to be this. So in that case, it's going to be like this. I made a mistake, it's going to be 1 to 10, right? So now bring this column here. So these are the top 10 countries affected. So US is the highest, Belgium is then is the 10th, right? China has even come down. So this is based on the number of, cases right based on account very interesting so we have seen how to answer this question on number of countries are affected top countries affected now let's see how to group them by per day right you have grouped them by 
country so let's group them by day so let's so be grouping by day right so how is it going to be so we already have our data frame here this option so we have the dates i want to group them by date to find the maximum day the day, the day with the maximum number right so in our case it's going to be this option my same thing i did so it's by let me copy it because it's so that you save ourselves time so to be the same thing here is per day right so in that case we will not be using the, this particular option using the dates column the dates column so i have to use a date symbol so date then count confi confirm then we just work on it perfectly just as we have here right perfect so this this is what you are using you are grouping the entire cell by dates so the day with the highest these are the dates so on the first of to, to on the 2nd of January, this was a number, right? And so forth. So in case I want to get the highest, I can also do the same thing as I did. So I can just copy this one here. And use the same sort we had. Right? We had the sort option here. Right? So I can also use, use the same thing. So I can put the entire stuff as seen. Cases per date. Right? Then from here, I can just do the sort see what I did <laughs> apologies let's turn this one back to the normal one so this video has been mostly without any graphs but we'll be doing some plots soon right don't worry about that now let's perfect so let's check that one out so let's check for the top the day right the day with the maximum right from here we have this one as 44 and some of them but in case i want to get the day with the maximum i can also do the same thing using the sort to help us with that right or i can just take that particular column only that column and find the maximum for that column right so let's try with the sort option so just as we had it here copy the same thing and then do the same thing but this is going to be cases per dates Right, if I go with this option, it's going to give us the top 10 days, right? Which were mostly affected. So these are the days. So this is 15, that is hmm, the day before yesterday. So this is the highest, right? Very interesting. So you can actually even do a plot of this entire stuff that you have done so far, right? You can do a plot of the cases. So let's do some plots. We have named to do most of them. Now let's do some data visualization. let's try that one out so in doing so there are some plots packages we'll be using so we'll be using the plots package and then we're using the start plot so the start plot allow us to be able to plot data frames right so these are the two main packages we're using you can also use gutfly gutfly you can also use plotly right so there are several packages you can use but we're using this two then the rest will be an assignment for us to work on because yeah, it seems we are taking a lot of time so let's do a simple plot right of our cases per day so let's first of all import the packages so be using using plot right and then we also be using start plot right so these are the two main packages we're using then after that use plot and start plot to help us with that so these are data frame so in case i want to plot it and just go with the same thing with because of the start plot i can just do the macro of df right which is automatically going to identify this particular data frame right then i can just supply the particular plot i want so if i go with plot like this right now i can just give an s column for that particular column i want to plot so i want to plot the s as the dates right so let's go with dates so this is going to be this option dates then the y column is going to be the other column i want to plot so let's pass that on as the count right or yeah the counts here that we have here so in that case it's going to be small c 
it's taking some time for it to run then you plot it and see how it is perfect so our plot has worked perfectly so to be able to plot with this format you just need this start plot package and it allows you to be able to use the data frame macro you supply the data frame that you want to plot you supply the particular kind of plot then the columns you want to plot very interesting so it has given us a very nice plot right <laughs> very very funny for plot very interesting something that is increasing as the time goes on very simple and very nice so, so of course there are many plots you can do but let's limit ourselves to these simple ones now let's do a simple this for plotting the cases per day so in case i also want to do a value plot i can also do that so let's try that one out so it is going to be our value count right so in that case it's going to be my let's go as value count and i'll use the same option of group by to help us with that so in that case it's going to be my by then i can just use the data frame itself right so i can use the data frame option that we had then i supply the particular column i want to go on so let's go with our symbol then i'll use the country slash region then here i'll just go with n row so this option allows us to be able to do value count right so the data frame the particular column we are using then the n row so the n row is going to do a value count for us And after that, I can also do the same thing as well. So while it is doing that, let's plot it. So it's going to be my value count. DF. Then I can also plot it with the normal plot. So I can use a simple plot, either the normal simple plot, the line plot, or I can also use a bar, right? So let's use a bar plot. So bar, and I'm passing a particular value. It's going to be my S for the symbol. So let's use this. So it has finished giving us the value count. Yeah, right. So this is a value count. It's not a proper value count, but that is how to do a value count using the n row, right? Very interesting. So in case I want to do a simple plot, I can also do the same thing. So let's try that one out. So we have our country and region column, and we have our S1 column. So I can do a symbol passing the particular symbol. It's going to be my country symbol. So it's going to be my country i have to correct this one region right so this is supposed to be this down there stuff here right, so this is going to be a symbol very interesting now i can supply the y right so that is how to work with a value count so it's going to be my s1 just as we have here we had an s1 here this s1 so put that one out and i can just use a bar plot to help us plot it See, I made a mistake. It's supposed to be value count. There's no DF. So let's run it again. Right. It's going to give us a simple, very simple bar plot. Can also do a pie chart using the same format, right? By just changing this one to pie chart. This is going to work. Or pie, right? Just change this bar. This as we change plot. The plot is going to give us a line plot. The bar is going to give us a bar plot pi is going to give us a pie chart very interesting so you can see from here that has given us a very funny plot <laughs> very funny plot right cool so that's something that you can do let's try out something different so we have seen how to do some basic plot per day now let's try and see what i can plot per the country right so that case is going to be the same thing that we did here so instead of this i'm going to change it to country so let's call it as cases per country right hope that's what it was let's check it out P cases per country right per countries rather per countries right so this option is good but it's going to give us so much this is going to give us a lot of countries so we do a simple the, the main plot right so this is it so we have our region and our count right so we also have our it's going to be our counts. Let's copy this one here. And change this one here. So this is going to be a very funny plot anyway. So you can do a simple plot like this. You can make it a bar plot. It's going to be a bar plot. Then we also do another one for the pie chart, right? So this is going to be for the pie chart. 
So it's going to be pi cut. And this is going to be for a normal bar plot. Bar plot, right? Bar chart or bar. <laughs> right. So this is it. So we change this one to bar here. Right. Then the x and then the y. The same thing for here. This we change this one from bar to pi. Right. That is also. Let's run this one out. Take some time. Then later I'll run this one out too. So it's uh, perfect. To be able to plot it in a very simple way. Right. So there's a plot that's given to us. Right. Very interesting. You can add the labels to it to give us the labels for each and every of the country as an assignment. And then you can also do for the chart, pie charts here. Doing the same thing. So the option is just with the start plot, you can just use this one. Wow. That is not nice. <laughs> so that is something very interesting. You can ask, also add labels to them, which is also going to work perfectly. Right. So that is something very simple. So thank you for watching this long tutorial. So there are a lot of things you can do. But these are the basic ones. So the basic idea is that first of all, you just need this particular package, CSV, data frames, plot, and then start plots. Then you can also use the data structures to help us count. So let's try that one before we move on. So at least we know how to use the data structures. It's going to be using data structures, structures, right? Then after that, we just go with count data structures have counts right a counter variable right that's a counter right so it's conflicted so one of the ways of avoiding the conflict is that instead of you making it like just go with data structures dot counter right then i'll pass in the particular stuff i want to do so i'll be passing in my data frame then what i want to the particular stuff I want to count, right? So that is going to be the shebang, then the symbol is going to be country slash region, right? Or well, can use a different, uh, maybe the dates, maybe the values or something like that. So that is how to count it. So this is going to work perfectly for us. So the counter, the particular column I want to count. Took some time and it's going to give us almost the same result like we had when we did the value count here, right? This same result here. Then give us the same thing as we had for the counter here in the format of a dictionary. It's perfect, right? So that is how to work with the data, data structures. Very simple and very interesting. Okay, so yeah, we have done a lot. So thank you for watching. Thank you for spending time with me. Hope you have learned something. So these are the basic stuff. You can also use PyCall to do anything that you want to do. So like the GeoPandas plot, you can also use PyCall to import GeoPandas and then do a uh, maybe another plot, right? Using GeoPandas, still inside Julia. Very, very interesting. So that is the basic idea. So we imported, we had our URL where we got our data set from. We use CSV and data frames to fetch our data set using this particular option. Then we did some busy stuff. We melted or restructured our data set using stack. Then we did some simple stuff like saving it, finding the number of days affected, the number of countries, number of keys per country and then several other aspects so thank you for watching and then see you in the next session stay blessed bye